So hey what's up guys, I thought I'd do another video on the SAMD21 microcontroller with Atmel Studio. In this video I really wanted to talk about interrupts. Interrupts are one of the most important things that you'll have to do on a microcontroller device. So far what we have been doing is when you've been using our peripherals, we have actually been using what is known as the polling method when you have your microcontroller device what happens is that the cpu when you use the peripheral the cpu will have to continuously monitor that peripheral and this excess cpu time you know will increase power consumption and the cpu is always operational now when it is that you need to do a lot of different things on the cpu the cpu may not always be able to service every peripheral when it requires attention. So to contact that problem, what we do is we actually use something called an interrupt. An interrupt is basically a section of code that notifies the CPU that there is some task that needs to be performed that requires immediate attention. So for example, let's imagine that we have to update our display on our embedded device every three seconds refresh but we must also read something like a temperature sensor we can use the cpu to continuously monitor the temperature sensor and then we can have an interrupt mechanism that allow us to update the our display every three seconds how this works is that when we use an interrupt the interrupt sends a signal to the cpu and then that cpu would directly go in what is known as the interrupt service routine and service the interrupt you know this interrupt service routine or isr you know use any program countdown the stack the when we actually trigger this interrupt the um the cpu would push the program counter register onto the stack and then it would load the program counter register with the address of the interrupt service routine interrupts on the um, arm cortex devices can get very complex so let's take a look at our data sheet and let's see what it says about interrupts so the device we'll be using of course is the sam d21 g18a microcontroller it's a cortex m0 processor and if we look at the peripherals on the cortex m0 core now this is a side from the manufacturer which is microchip based peripherals that surround the core. If we look at the core peripherals, we'll see that one of the highlighted peripherals is what is known as the nested vectored interrupt controller. When we perform an interrupt, what happens is that the interrupt service routine program actually um, depends on something that is called an interrupt vector table. Now this vector table contains what is known as the uh, you know like basically addresses of the interrupt service routine this special peripheral called the nested um, vector interrupt controller allows the prioritizing of interrupts on the microcontroller so some interrupts may have a higher priority than other interrupts so let's say for example we have let's take back the example of the of our little device where we have a screen and display and a temperature sensor let's imagine that we have a fail safe mechanism that when a device overheats it would trigger some transistor to you know um, do something like automatic shutdown on some relay for some emergency stopping system you know that would require immediate attention compared to updating the lcd display in terms of an interrupt so we can probably assign the higher interrupt priority to this emergency shutdown mechanism and updating the display will have a lower um, a lower interrupt priority so the nested vector interrupt controller will deal with how interrupts interrupt other interrupts and you know things like um, basically exception assignments within the arm cortex and microcontroller core so 
you know, um, I could spend all day talking about the nested vector interrupt controller and interrupts on the SAMD21. Um, but what I really wanted to, to focus on is really using the external interrupt controller on the device because usually when you're creating devices to trigger interrupts you know interrupts can come from internal peripherals on the microcontroller but there are instances where you're designing a device and you may want to control that interrupt mechanism by means of a button on the device itself so that's what i'll be focusing on so if we look at our data sheet we'll see that it's actually an external interrupt controller on the SAMD21 device. What this does is it allows external pins on the microcontroller to be configured as interrupt lines. So um, what we can do is we can do something called masking the interrupt. So when we have interrupts, the ability to actually control whether that interrupt is enabled or not is what we call masking. And it's usually some register, you know, some type of interrupt mass register that we control to actually allow the interrupt to be active or not. So by using the external interrupt controller, we can actually decide whether these external interrupts will be active or not. And they can also be configured to be jointed on rising, falling on both edges of the um, actually connect our external push button or whatever. So um, we can out the 16 external pins and there's one non-maskable pin that we can consider. Um, like I said, it can do rising, falling on both edges. It can be, um, the inter this one can be done asynchronously without the clock. Now this might help with things like power saving. So when you go into sleep mode, you can actually configure an interrupt without, you know, consuming excess power. So external interrupting, um, non masker interrupting, there's a lot of settings related to interrupts. So let's take a look at the actual code so we'll see how we can actually configure an external pin to use our external interrupt controller on the SAMD21 device. So this is our code. So the first thing we do before we configure our interrupt is we actually disable the external interrupt controller or nested vector interrupt controller we actually disable that after we disable our external interrupt controller we clear um, pending interrupts we declare device specific interrupts and then we set the interrupt priority for our um, external interrupt controller now the next step was actually to actually set up the interrupt pin. Now to set up the interrupt pin, we actually enable pull up, the pull up on the pin you want to use. Then the pin needs to be configured as a function A, special function A, which is to say we assign that pin to external interrupt 12. We'll be using um, pin A7 in this example so we actually enable the peripheral multiplexer in the pin configuration register of the port then we select that function to zero this is ex this is exactly what these two lines of code accomplish here we then need to select the external interrupt clock so we select our clock we enable the clock and then we'll actually be able to use our interrupt once the clock is enabled. We perform a software reset on the external interrupt controller and then we wait for the synchronization. So to better understand this software reset and the synchronization, maybe we should look at the data sheet and it might shed some insight. So let's take a look at the data sheet. Now, as the data sheet mentions, Due to the asynchronous nature between the main clock domain and the peripheral clock domain, some registers need to be synchronized when written or read. When executing operation and in synchronization, the synchronization busy bit in a status register 
will meet the, will be set immediately and cleared once synchronization is complete. So that is what we do here. We wait when we wait for the synchronization. Now in regards to the software reset, if we actually look in our registers, we see that when you write a 1 to this bit, it resets all registers in the center of controller to the initial state and the EIC will be disabled. What we do effectively here is we perform a safe software reset on the external drop controller. The next step we need to do is actually configure and enable the interrupt. We will use fall energy detection for our interrupt detection and then we'll enable the interrupt. The part of the code that really handles our interrupt is known as the handler section. So what this code does is if we cut if we detect the external interrupt, we will turn on the LED on pin P17 with a layer period of time to know that our section of code is working and then we need to clear the interrupt flag. So just before we hit our main program loop, we need to enable the interrupt. And in the regular state, we'd simply toggle the LED connected to our microcontroller. So LED is actually on pin 17. You see here, we set our drive strength to strong. So the effect we get overall is that our LED will be constantly being toggled. And then when we press our external, so when we press our switch connected to external drop controller, we'll actually see the LED being lit solid for a period of three seconds and then it'll go back into actually being in its default state of being toggled. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I knew that um, this video was a little rushed, but really get into the complexities of the external interrupt capabilities and even interrupt capabilities on these ARM Cortex devices is something that can get very complex. So if you like, you can actually um, download the specifications of the Cortex M0 Plus Core and you can go through the datasheet. But with this code I provided here, it should be enough to get started. You know, the device is in a, the interrupt mechanism will be in a working state. And then you can just simply modify my code here for your particular interrupt needs. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel.